we've come far enough through continuous random variables that it is a good point to just stop, pause, and look back a little bit, and that will actually help us move forward with today's content. So let's see how we can go in terms of all of the concepts and skills that we have covered so far in like the last couple of weeks. Think back to the very first lesson in this topic. Um, we had a look at, we compared the statistics we did earlier in the year versus the statistics that we would spend this chunk of time on, right? What was the key difference between the old statistics we were looking at and the new ones, Zaki? Discrete and continuous. Very good. So we called them discrete random variables, right? And that's where you've got, you know, things that you count, like numbers of people or uh, dollars, things that are separated out. Um, versus discrete versus continuous random variables. And this is what we have spent our time on, but we needed to sort of uh, point out that there are some real differences between them. Okay, good, so we looked at that. And then we said uh, with these continuous random variables that we would describe them in terms of the language we've had in like calculus land, right? We would use um, a particular kind of function to describe um, the chance of different outcomes on our continuous random variable. What kind of function was that called? Has a, a probability density function. Well done. So, very good. Um, on these continuous random variables, we said, okay, the name of the game is these particular functions here. And um, we looked at their properties, namely two of them. What are the two properties that every probability density function has? Number one, um, it all, if you add up the area underneath, it equals one. And then there's the other one, which we don't look at very much, but. Um, yeah, the probabilities have to be positive, right? Or, or zero is fine, um, but you can't have negative probabilities, okay? Um, we'll come back to this guy in a second. We then have a look at um, the simplest kind of probability density function. The very simplest kind started with a U. Uniform. We called them uniform probability distributions. And then, of course, all the rest of them that are not uniform. So we looked briefly at that, and then we've spent most of our time um, working with all these probability density functions and using them to find different things. So for example, um, we might use the probability density function, as the name suggests, to find out a probability, right? You'd go to the function, um, you'd integrate from whatever lower boundary to whatever upper boundary, and that would give you a probability. Um, what other stuff can we find with the probability density function? I'll give you a clue. They all start with M. Oh. Okay, very good. So, so we call these measures of central tendency. Very good. And they all start with M. So we had um, first one, the easiest one was the mode. Um, that's just the highest point on your probability density function. Yeah? Um, then we said uh, median. Uh, what's the median? How, how do we find the median on a probability density function? It, it's the middle, right? So half of your uh, scores or whatever are on one side of the median, half are on the other. And then the, the most recent one we did was mean. What do we also call mean? Average. Uh, average in this context starts with E. We call it expected value, right? So um, it gets this different name in a probability density uh, a probability distribution, I should say. Oh, and one more thing, just because it's on the board. What, um, what are our abbreviations for median and mean? What are the... Uh, okay, so we do use x-bar sometimes, but more frequently we've been using another Greek letter. So gonna, it's like a U with an extra bit on it. Think, think, think. It's, it's mu, right? It's mu, mu. And then what about median? Median? Hmm. Uh, okay, so we're, we're coming to, I'll come to that in a second. Um, we generally use Q2, which is a bit weird, right? You're like, meaning, why is it Q2? It's actually, there's a good reason for it. What's the Q stand for? Quartile. It's the quartile and it's the second one, right? Okay, um, I left off one uh, set of brackets here, right? From, um, from these guys. Sorry. Well, you guys have done a lot of work, right? Um, we would then say, okay, you know where the mean is. You know where the mean is. Now I want to know um, what's like, how, how much do you spread out from the mean? Do you remember this? Okay. So we said from these, um, there's this big idea of variance from which you can also get, and you were all saying this to me before, from which you can also get standard deviation. And that standard deviation is why we use sigma S for Standard. Okay, so this is where we have been so far. And just what I want you to notice is, as you look at all of these different concepts, I want you to notice how frequently 
To work out any of these things, how frequently we need to take this probability density function, and then basically we integrate, right? Like, do you notice, like, every second question, or, or more frequently actually, you're like, oh, take it and then integrate, take it and then integrate. Um, there's probably one notable exception, which is this guy, the mode. Um, you know how we're looking for the highest point on the probability density function? Um, you're looking for the maximum of this, so instead of integrating, you might differentiate, or you might just look at the endpoints, okay? But for everything else, pretty much, we are integrating, okay? Which is why um, the process of integrating this guy, the probability density function, when you integrate it, because this com com happens, comes up and happens so frequently, um, it gets its own name, and that's the first concept we're going to have a look at today. So the heading you can make is cumulative distribution review. Close function. If you integrate a function, you're going to get another function, right? So this is called the CDF. PDF integrates up into the CDF. So this is our um, this is our heading for today. Okay. Um, now let's uh, before we start looking at like the notation for it, um, I want us to understand what on earth it means. So firstly, I've told you, it's basically what happens when you take your density function and then you integrate. But I want to understand the name, like what's, what's this about, okay, cumulative. So let's think about frequency, which is a, um, an idea we got from our discrete random variables, versus cumulative frequency, because this is where we usually use the word cumulative, right? Okay, so I'm sorry I keep doing this to you, but it's just um, an easy example that I think you can all attach to. Let's think one more time about heights in this class, okay? So I might say, what is the frequency? I oh, know, sorry, Zachy. <laughs> um, I'll pick a different height this time. Um, what's the frequency of Max? How tall are you? Can you, can you tell us your actual height? No. 190, far out. Okay, so 190, right? So if I asked, Stay with me, you top. What is the frequency, frequency of heights of 190 centimeters or kind of like 190, right, in this class? And the answer would be 1. Right? That would be the frequency. But if I asked, what's the cumulative frequency of that same height? What that would mean is I include that height, but then I also include everyone before that. Right? Does that make sense? So we, we accumulate. So in this class, that would be, oh, is that 20? Miss? No, 19? 20? Today? Or <laughs> today? What is it today? Today is 6. OK. So you can see what that does is it includes Max's height and everyone beneath Max's height, right? Or before. OK, so you accumulate everything. So now I want you to think about what that might mean here. OK? So what does the probability density function give you? It gives you a probability, right, of a certain event taking on a certain value. And by the way, um, we've talked, we've used this notation before, but um, I remember, I think it was Jermaine actually asked me this question. She's like, what's with the big X and the little X? So if this is something that's just gone over your head, this is as good a point as any to um, highlight what it means. That big X is, what thing are you interested in measuring right now? What's, what's the variable, okay? So in the example that I just gave you, it's height. Um, but it might be temperature, or it might be population size, or something like that. Okay? So this is what's the actual variable being measured. And then this guy over here, the little x, is what value are you interested in that variable taking? Um, for example, 190 centimeters. That's a value. The variable is like the height. Okay? So this gives us the probability of a certain thing. But if I now say, okay, in a cumulative way, I'm now asking, not what's the probability of a certain one thing happening, but what is the probability of that thing happening or any height less than that? Do you remember that? So how, how would I notate this? Well, it's, it's anything less than or equal to that particular number that you're interested in, that particular value. Does that make sense? Um, and that would be the little x. Okay, so there's the value, there's the variable. Okay. So what we do is we say, this is our definition, okay? Our cumulative distribution function is, uh, or equals rather, the probability of B 
being less than some certain thing. Okay? Now, um, you might remember when we were first uh, introduced to probability density functions, we don't like having these one-sided um, inequalities. Because when we're integrating, because that's, that's what we're going to do eventually, you've got to start somewhere, you've got to end somewhere. Does that make sense? Right? So instead of saying it this way, what we'll do is we'll say, um, you start from wherever wherever your values start, your lowest height, your lowest temperature. We generally call that what? The lowest thing. Zero. Um, is it zero? I mean, sometimes it's zero, but we generally use A. A for like beginning, right? You're like, oh, I go from A to B. Okay, A to B. So I'll start at A. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I will go up to and include whatever value you're interested in right now. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. So it's just like another um, yes, that's exactly what it is, but, but in a specific, like, for a specific value. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, once you get to here, just put your pens down for a second because I'm going to show you something to not write, <laughs> which is going to sound weird. Okay. So, pens down once you've gotten to this point. Okay. Now, we normally are pretty okay with writing the integral that comes from here. We would normally say you integrate from start to end like so, and then we would normally say, oh, well, you're integrating the probability density function, which we usually call what? Like, what's the typical name of it? It's just f of x, right? So don't write this, please. Um, you would normally say, put in your probability density function and then integrate, okay? And the reason I'm telling you not to write this is, I wonder if you notice something kind of peculiar about what I've just written. You integrate this thing with x, and then once you've got a primitive, you then put your lower and upper boundaries in, right? Isn't f of x just a frequency of the cumulative? Uh, yes, I know, I know, but you're going to accumulate it from the start to whatever value you're interested in. Okay? But, but this is the thing which is weird, right? You're like, wait a second, you're integrating with respect to x, but then the thing you put in is x. That's a little bit weird, right? So now this is what I would like you to write. Instead of writing f of x dx, we write f of t dt. Now this is a very minor difference. In the end, we basically do the same thing. Um, and I'm going to give you an example in a second, right? Whatever your probability density function is, um, you just pop it in, integrate it, and then substitute in your a and your x. But just as a point of formal notation, we don't like putting x into x, so we just give this a different name. Okay?